Yo. Archie Sharp. Off the back. The win with Ramlas. Ramlas, Ramos. Ramos. Sergio. Sergio Ramos. How you feeling? Yeah, lovely, lovely. I'm glad it's all done now. Yeah. Glad it's all done. Face is looking good, not too bruised. It ain't too bad now. We're a week later now, aren't we? So it ain't too bad. A little bit sore the next day. Yeah. Mm. Was you expecting that to have a sore face the day no, after? No, I wasn't really. I wasn't expecting to go more than one round. <laughs> but we did. We went 10 hard rounds, so... But this is the thing with this fight. I mean, obviously talking to Richard Sawyer. Yep. Um, AKA the, Dickie Sawyer. Before the fight. He knew, do you know what I mean? He he, he said that this guy's a tough fighter. Well, um, he's eleven and zero mm -hmm. with six knockouts at the time. Yes. yes why yes. why did no one else give him that credit? Well, this is the thing in that they um, do you know what it is? The end of the year, I've had a very busy year. Uh, in camp, I felt ill a lot. <clears throat> so like, even with that, the uh, public uh, I've done the public workout at Lakeside, but I had um, another workout at the Peacock Gym. That I went to just to do interviews. I couldn't attend. I couldn't do the um, do the pad work because I was so ill. So that's that was a pain. And that was two weeks before the fight. I was still ill then. Uh, I had a chest infection and a sinus infection. I was doing a few rounds sparring, being ill as well. Um, so my camp wasn't great for this fight. But to tell you the truth, I'm not gonna lie. They sent me for the opponent, and a little schoolboy era. I looked at him. I said, you know what? He ain't boxed out of Latvia. I'll be alright, do you know what I mean? I, 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 listen, a great champion will always win no matter what. Um, that's what I just tell myself all the time. So yeah, I wasn't running on 100%. Uh, I'm not going to lie. And I did have expectations of blowing him out of in two rounds. Uh, just got a bit complacent. Like I say, Christmas on top. It's been a very busy year. Two days before the fight, I just got the keys to my house. I've had so much stuff going on. Um, I just have a little company. Just, just loads of little bits and bobs that you think you do when you're not fighting, you know what I mean? You're doing in your spare time, but for some reason, me, being me, I've just jumped on and I took on loads of things from the head one with everything. Um, yeah, we got through, we got the win, and all credit due uh, to Ramlas, he was a lot more of a tough of opponent than we expected. And then I done my research after, um, and come across him in the European Games uh, in 2016. And he got beat by a fellow who comes second or third in that in that competition. Um, he's qualified for the World Games. Do you know what I mean, his pedigree. He was a seven-time Latvian national champion. Uh, and as everyone knows about me, I've always said that I'm a great believer, a uh, great believer of amateur pedigree. And that fellow had the amateur pedigree. Um, he had a very good amateur pedigree. I spoke to Joe Cordina, who's obviously as well another fantastic fighter also my sparring partner um for a few camps that we've had now uh and he, he messaged me after and said oh, i don't know why you're beating yourself up he said because the fella you boxed i boxed him as well do you know what i mean coming through the amateurs so it just goes to show the fella's been around he's mixing with the best amateurs because at the time joe gordini when he was an amateur he was phenomenal do you know what i mean he, i think he went to the olympics and other and other things like that so He's mixing with them sort of boys. The fella's 30 year old, so he's in his prime. And I think that, yeah, fair play to him. I don't think there's a lot many super featherweights now I really are going to take that fight, to be honest with you, because he's definitely come over it to win. And no one can say he can't. He tried to take that belt off for of me that night. Um, he come at me with 10 rounds non stop. And yeah, and also I noticed as well, so I've been chatting to him since the fight actually. Um, on Instagram, nice old fella, very nice fella, but I've been chatting to him on Instagram and I was scrolling through, scrolling through, he's boxing mad mate, like he's literally, he's been sparring out in Ireland, he's just been sparring with um, an eight or nine time national champion, Irish champion, tall, tall fighter, young boy, so they've done their own work, do you know what I mean, they're not idiots, they've gone in there um, and he's been sparring with elite fighters, he goes all over the, all over the place sparring training camps um, and that's a lesson learnt for me for sure because I took took things a bit, like I say got a bit complacent as soon as they sent me the opponent I said yeah no worries sweet we'll have that so there was a, a few different variables on the night um, you ended you ended up coming on last 
Yeah. That, do you feel like that affected you coming into the fight? Do you know what? I I thought I was going to be... For, someone said to me leading up to the fight, oh, you're probably going to be on first or second. So I, I had that in my head, and I'm telling everyone, listen, I'll be on first or second, yeah? And then the morning of the fight, I get a message come through saying you're the 15th fight, you're the last fight of the night after the main event. So I was fuming, as you can imagine. Um, so I wasn't happy about that at all. But it is what it is. Look, I wrapped up early. Things just wasn't great that night. Do you know what I mean? Everyone say you have a bad day in the office. That was my bad day in the office. No one ever seen me box like that again. I sat down the next day. Listen, I won. The, I, I think I won nine or ten rounds anyway. I think I won the fight clear, but... It was a nice brutal fight and I thought, sat down and I thought to myself, as this fella was only boxing Latvia, come and give me such an hard night. And I've done my research and that's when I picked it all up and fair play to him. But it just goes to show me running on 70%, 60% or whatever you want to say, I still managed to get through and win. That's what champions do and I give the fans a good, exciting fight, I believe. So I think they loved it. So this match was made quite late on in Chicago, mm. wasn't it? You were... I mean, how late on was it? Very late on, very late on, because I didn't even have an opponent. I think two, three weeks before the fight, two weeks before the fight. So, I've obviously got him in, and he recently boxed. He boxed in September himself. He's been in the gym ticking over, waiting for this, one, for waiting for a big call like this. And, um, like I say, he was out in Ireland, sparring multinational champions, so, um, he's obviously keen, and he cut me out and give it his all. Fair play to him, and we got through it. We live and we learn. I won't ever make that mistake again. 18 and 0 now, I ranked fourth in the world, so we ain't done too much of a bad year. Um, I look forward to 2020, and now I'm just enjoying the rest of the minute. It's been a week. I'll do another couple of weeks, I think. Yeah. As you said, you've moved up another ranking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm fourth now in the WBO world ranking, um, and now we look to fight the bigger fights. and. I know, like I say, my body needs a rest. I'm, I'm having that big rest now. Uh, hope, it doesn't look like I'm going to be out now until April. There's a big show, I think, in April at the O2. And hopefully, yeah, we get myself a big name. I've had some banana skin fights this year with some banana skin opponents that people wouldn't dare to take. And I've took them. And I've come out on top. Is it worse to say the cake rises, isn't it? Is it the cake rises to the top? I don't know. The cream always rises to the top. Yeah, the cream always rises to the top. Yeah, well that's me in it. Always rise. You're the cream. I'm the cream, mate. I'm the cream cracker. Jeez. So I'll give everyone a Christmas cracker and now I'm rising to the top. <laughs> okay, then. Um, yeah. And then we'll get that number one spot when we go to the top. So do you read in, pop, pop, how pop. much do you read in to some of these YouTube commenters and do you know what? I don't really. People message me um, and I just say, look, I don't know why you bother even showing me because I don't really care. Uh, a year ago, no one thought I'd be in this position. I've known I'm going to be world champion since day one. It's just making everyone, it's, do you know what I mean? It's it showing it and I've got to prove it. But to be honest with you, I don't really care. I'm just in there doing my thing. They get me the fights. So I get in there and I win. That's that's, that's what it's about. Uh, and they say, as well with opponents, you know when you got a fighter in front of you and you know you gotta get out of bed for you, you gotta be on your A game, you you you're on your A game. Like when I when I knew with Woodstock I was the underdog and I knew well, I've got to be on my A game and to beat this fellow and I did. Um didn't lose oh, I lost about two or three rounds against him. This fellow here didn't like I say I overlooked him, everything else, didn't perform was great, still put still won, still put a good show on. Put me in someone with the Oscar Valdez's and all the what Jamil Herrings and things like that. You will soon see me rise to the top, definitely hundred percent. So on the TV behind you at the moment, we've got. Who's this? Just Frampton. Warrington, Frampton. Yeah, exactly. Just running in front of That's that's what I mean. These are fights that uh, Frampton's obviously can't suit with featherweight. This is the fight I want. Um, people can say what they want to say. How far away is someone like Frampton compared to a Ramlabs? How far in front is he? I mean, he's a he's a Great fighter, but like I say, 2020 is my year. This is why I want to fight these. I don't call people's names out just because of the sake of it. Like, I've never ever called anyone's name out um, until I was ready to step up and the Woodstock fight got made. I was ready, and now I've got a target. My back people are coming for me, but I want to step up. I want to be number one. 
going to do so I need to box Oscar Valdez, Jamel Herring, Carl Frampton these are the names I need to, to box to be where I want to be and I know I can do it why do you think boxers get so so much criticism when they when they want to step up? Because until because the thing that's what I'm saying, you get criticism. And it's just it's what it is, isn't it? And you you need to step up to know what level you're at. Do you know what I mean, if I get up there and I get beat, then everybody knows I'm like that level. But I believe I'm going to win. Uh, there'll be a different training camp, different training method for me stepping up. I.e. going out to uh, abroad for sparring. But. I know what my ability is, and I just gotta go out there and do what I gotta do. Well, look, I'm 18, and I've, I've been sparring. I've been boxing since I was seven. Um, my my amateur pedigree's second to none, as people know. I won like eight, nine national titles over here, um, which the UK boxing as amateurs is unbelievable. Sometimes you have to box three or four times just to get out of one division, uh, like the South East or London's. Uh, so definitely done my my stepping stones as an amateur, I'm not a boxer, 20, 25 or 24 international fights with great, uh, for GB, so I definitely avert my stars to be where I am, I think. Only 24 as well, 25 in April, so I'm at the right age now. Starting to peak at the right time, I think. So there's been a bit of back and forth with you and Sam Byron. Hmm. What's that, on Twitter? Oh. Don't even know if it's him, I think he's a stupid manager, Carl Greaves, but he's just a fool. Um, I ain't worried about him. I'm not being funny, I looked at the rankings, Bowen ain't even in the WBA World Ranking anymore, I think. I don't think he's in it. I didn't see his name. I think a catch is in it. And I, I'm not even joking, he was like, as I'm saying, he was above me. At the beginning of the year, they was all above me. And now, they, that's why Sam Bowen is saying my name now, because he ain't got the British no more, and I think he's lost his ranking, so... He's going to want to say my name, he's going to want that fight, but see you later, Sam. Bye, thanks. What about um, um, Kakachi? Same again, Kakachi is a great fighter, but in the WBO world ranking, he's below me. Don't want to fight one below me. It's just, I ain't interested in the British and the English titles at the minute, and, and that's just my dream to be world champion. My dream ain't to be a British champion. My dream, my dream ain't to be an English tra uh, English champion. Don't get me wrong. It's lovely to have the belts. Of course, it's lovely to have the belts. But I'm chasing world titles at a minute. Is so this, I wanna... does Rich think you're ready for these big shots? Yeah, and Rich knows my ability. He's trained me since I was seven. Um, he knows. He's seen me inspiring in fights. He knows I've got it mentally and I've got it physic and I've got the ability to do it. Because that's a lot of it's mental. How was your communication with Rich um, and in that last fight? Because I mean, we see it, obviously, I've run it mm. back a few times and we see he's giving you clear instructions to mm. keep it keep it moving. Get I the think um, I'll tell you what that is with that, how you're right. I watched it myself and you know what? I come back to the corner and I was chatting to Rich saying, Rich, I can't do it. I know what you're saying is 100% right. And I know that's what I'll be saying to myself. You no, know, when I'm watching it back, I'm saying the same things to myself. But I was in there, and my body just wouldn't do what my mind's telling me to do. I'm thinking to myself, right, just get on the back foot and jab, just move. But I just, my feet weren't right there, my timing weren't there. I just couldn't get myself going. I really couldn't. And I was, and that's, I come back shaking my head, and that's why I couldn't get going. And I said, I, I said, I think I said it in the corner. I said it two or three times. And I said, boys, I can't get going. Like my team, my corner people were so great, and they was unbelievable. They was. G and me on all the way through the fight, Adam, Archie, Mark, um, Neil and Richie, there was G and me on, who my brother, my brother was everyone, even the fans, everyone was G and me on, so I can't, everyone, do you know what I mean, it was great, but they knew, the corner knew that I was, I needed just to keep myself focused, keep going, and just get through the fight, and we did, done, bury it, put it to bed, and move on to 2020. So you got a big year in front of you, coming Massive. into a new decade. Yeah. What's the next 10 years going to hold for Archie Sharp? Well, like I said, I want to be at number one spot by the end of 2020. Um, I've got 12 months to do it. So hopefully I've got the right team behind me that regarding my training. Um, obviously my mind coach, I've got MT, Cam Frank Warren who can make the fights happen. So uh, BT Sport behind me now. So I think we can do it 100%. Yeah. So a massive thank you to the fans, everyone who's come out to support. As always, keep buying tickets, um, the messages I've been getting on social media. So a massive thank you to everyone.
obviously my team, uh, third rule films for their filming. And of obviously of course to my team no there, we've got Toby, Linda, Richie, Archie, Mark Rowe, Neil. It's a big team, uh, all of us. I know I'm the one in there fighting but there's a lot of going on behind the scenes. And obviously a massive thank you to my sponsors. I've got Against All Odds and Dirty South with the clothing. So I much appreciate all that. Uh, custom kettles, trading time and hat and kettles. I've been supplying me some bad boy watches for the year. Um, so if anyone wants a nice new watch, definitely check them out on Insta. Uh, there's a reason why there's free, free um, Instagrams, if everyone's wondering. Because there's all different shops, so just check them out anyway. Um, so, yes, and you got Champs Boxing, who have definitely helped out a lot as well. Supply me with training gear and gloves. And Donado gloves as well, what I've been fighting him. What a set of pair of gloves they are. Very good pair of gloves. Um, so yes, a massive thank you to them. Linda Keane, obviously, my mind coach, as always. Um, Paul. Paul, my nutritionist. What a great job he's done, because the amount of food I eat, especially like now, I've had some serious amount of food in a week. I'll probably put on about four stone, if that's possible. But... Um, so yeah, he's my man, he's my nutritionist man, getting me in great shape for the fights. Uh, Gary, Noel, Duncan, been helping me out big time. And also Endo Sport, which is a CBD drink that I've just recently done a little bit of work with. So if anyone's interested in CBD, um, there's a drink there. Also Hemp Kitchen for the oils, they do the oils. So if anyone's interested in CBD oils and things like that, check out Hemp Kitchen. But for the drinks, for the CBD drinks, which is, I think, I believe they're the first company in Europe who have bought out CBD drinks. So definitely check them out as well because the drinks taste lovely and also they contain CBD. No THC, unfortunately. Right. Well, that was a joke. <laughs> right, so... <laughs> WBO drug test me next week. Yeah, I mean, they'll be knocking the door in here. <laughs>